today's episode is jam-packed with shopping, hauls, super high-end finds that were very valuable. I even got some clothes today. I found tons of name brand stuff there, some of which I took, some of which I didn't. And you are going to freak when you realize how much amazing stuff you can get from the Goodwill bins that's going to be thrown out, even some funny things. I also am going to make over even a pair of jeans. And then I have tons of thrift flips that I'm going to do. A lot of these I actually kept and I'm going to be decorating with them in my house. And then some of them I did sell. And I'm going to take you with me to my booth at the very end of the video and give you a tour of all the stuff that I'm currently selling in my booth. And some of it is from what I got today and some of it is from some of the last videos you guys were interested in seeing it in my booth. But stay tuned to the very end to see that booth tour. And if you are new here and you've never watched any of my videos, if this is the very first one you're seeing, I love to go shopping at thrift stores and flip the things that I find for a profit and also flip them to be home decor in my own home. And I love to do things on a super shockingly low budget and make it look high end. Good morning! It is a Goodwill Bins day and we are on our way already and we're actually early today which almost never happens. I am mostly looking for pieces that I can do French country, um, specifically that I can do for decorating my bookshelves. I just bought some new bookshelves for my living room and um, of course stuff for my booth and the stuff I'm looking for in my booth is going to be just like really classic timeless um, decorating all year round sort of things so hopefully I can find that um, and I may look a little bit through the clothes because I've lost some weight lately so I need some more shirts and uh, we'll see what I can find but I'm really excited I have a good feeling about today and if I don't find anything, then oh well, but I hope I find some cool stuff. They let everybody in early. I wish that I could film with the actual sound that's happening in the stores here, but all the stores here, all the Goodwills, play music, and I can't play copyrighted music in my videos and still have my videos monetized so that is why you never hear me actually playing the sounds of the stores when i go thrift shopping but i did find this amazing furniture dolly right off the bat and i knew somebody else was going to grab it if i didn't and i always check the book section as well i got this kids book with um it says heroes and horses it's a bunch of greek mythology stuff which my middle daughter loves books are always 50 cents at my goodwill outlet bins and so these were a steal of a deal this one is called Reader's Digest Illustrated Guide to Ireland. I thought that was so neat. Next, I got Robert Bateman, An Artist in Nature. Beautiful coffee table book. It's very pretty looking on the outside, but it has tons of artwork on the inside, so I got some more free artwork. Next book is Metropolitan Seminars in Art, and this has a bunch of artwork inside it as well which are great for framing in my cool frames the last book is a book that i will be selling in my booth and it is called back to basics how to learn and enjoy traditional american skills i talk about this all the time that we don't know how to do the stuff that people used to do and i think this would be oh and it's a it's a reader's digest of course <laughs> Normally I don't look at the clothes when I go to the Goodwill bins because I didn't really need any, but I noticed that there was a lot of really good stuff today. This sweater was really cute and I even found a J. Crew sweater. I didn't take them home with me because I don't exactly have an idea of what size I'm going to be next winter since I am doing, you know, I'm working out trying to get healthy, but I did pick up some really cute stuff that I can wear right now and I also picked up something for Halloween that you're gonna see in a minute. And then I found this, which was super valuable. So let's go over what exactly I got. So I got myself a sports bra, needed one of these, and it's like brand new. I got my oldest daughter these pants to cut into shorts. I think she would have a blast cutting these apart to make them into shorts. This is Loft brand, and it's so cute. Look at that. Ooh, 
the wind is blowing it for me. But I thought that'd be really cute for our spring and summer. This cute jacket is the brand Kenzie Jeans. I don't know anything about that brand, but it's a really cute, versatile jacket. Tons of pockets, and it's really soft, actually. I got some vintage clothing as well. Sorry I keep touching my face, but the wind is blowing my hair into my face. But look at these vintage pants. How cute! And they're a size 10, which is smaller than a current size 10. So I hope I fit them. I recently have lost some weight. I've been going to the gym and um, super early in the morning. <laughs> and been working my butt off for about three weeks. And I've lost about, I don't know, like six pounds, I guess. And I have gone down in a pant size and a shirt size almost. So I went from a 10 or 12 to an 8 now. Yay me. This I thought was really unique. I have definitely never seen this before and I don't, I don't, I have a few family members that were in the Vietnam War and I, I just don't know if they would be interested in this. But I did look this up online and they were very valuable. So obviously this is a shirt, like a military style shirt from around the time of the Vietnam War. So probably collectible and I'll probably sell this one online on my Etsy shop. But I thought it was a, a really major score considering the price that it's going for. I'll show you right now. It seems like it's from the 80s and it's going from $35 to all the way up past $80. So I thought that was a great score. And then I found something else that's really great. The last clothing item is hilarious. You're going to get a really good laugh out of it. But just keep an open mind. <laughs> you ever seen Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> this is the Beast's costume <laughs> with big old shoulder pads. Oh, look at this thing. But, since it has those big shoulder pads, it will fit my husband in the shoulders because he's got big shoulders. And we're going to all be pirates this year for Halloween and do a Pirates of the Caribbean theme. And I thought, this is a great pirate shirt, you know? Look at this. <laughs> That's really piratey, right? It would be a unique colored pirate shirt. And I had been looking online on Amazon. <laughs> a couple days ago at pirate costumes and they're really expensive so I got this one for maybe a dollar or two and we'll just cut these big old look at these shoulder pads we'll cut these shoulder pads out and then he could be the blue pirate <laughs> it says Disney princess on there that's so funny but yeah this will be perfect my daughters were so excited when they saw that this was in my big bulk of my haul today before I can do a little try on haul for you, I need to make sure that I wash everything. And you kind of get a sneak peek of some other things that I got today that I also had to wash in this load of laundry. I don't usually do fashion shows on my channel, but I thought that it would be really cool to showcase how I also use thrifted clothes. So these are those pants. They fit so well. They're just like a little tiny bit tight in the belly, but they are so cute. And I love that they're kind of like capris. Capris fit my legs more comfortably. I don't care who says they're out of style. I love them. I got this shirt on ThreadUp, so it's also thrifted, but not from the Goodwill bins. <laughs> and then look at how good it looks with the jacket that I got as well. Look at this outfit. This is a really good quality jacket. Sorry, my bed's not perfectly made, but the quality on this is really great. I haven't looked up the value yet, I'll do that, but this all looks so cute together. It is perfect for spring, and I think that I maybe spent like $4, <laughs> or including the shirt, I probably spent maybe $10 total on this whole outfit. And these pants are just, I can't get over how cute these are. 
Oh my goodness. I love how high waisted they are too. And when you bend, they don't, you know, slide down. <laughs> if you know, you know. I hate when that happens. Let me show you the other shirt that I got as well. Okay. Here is the next shirt. This is from Loft, the brand Loft. And it's not really picking up the pattern very well on the camera. But it's a little see-through, so I put a little bit of an undershirt on there. And I paired it with some white capris for spring. I got these capris on ThreadUp for like maybe $9. <laughs> and then the shirt, maybe I spent a dollar on it because it's really lightweight. I definitely don't think it's a full pound of clothing because they charge by the pound. I think they charge like two... 229 or something like that per pound for the clothing, but this is a loft brand shirt very high quality It looks really good. It's gonna be nice and breezy for the summer as well and still like a little bit of sun protection But wow, I'm gonna be looking cute <laughs> Let me know what you think um, in the comment section I've been learning a little bit about like your color season and what colors work for your skin tone and all that stuff and I don't think this green is a color that is for my skin tone but I just love it too much to not wear it <laughs> what do you think I don't know I feel so weird doing like a little fashion show I just feel awkward but um, I'm sure you guys will be very nice in the comments I'm not worried about that but it's just awkward now we're gonna go and make over those shorts that I got for my daughter and I'm just gonna cut them into shorts their pants with like a bunch of rips in them so I'm just gonna cut those into shorts in the last like eight to ten years trying to shop for my girls I have come to realize that it is very difficult to find modest length shorts for little girls. It really disturbs me that it's that hard to find shorts that aren't booty shorts for little girls. But, I mean, sometimes you just gotta get creative. And um, every once in a while I can find some Bermuda shorts or longer shorts. But for the most part, I just cut pants into shorts. And sometimes their pants will still fit them in the waist but be too short. So then it's perfect. We can just cut them into shorts or capris for the summertime. Great way to save money. Ever since I did that Goodwill Bins video where there was that beautiful blue and white toile comforter, everyone was saying, why didn't you get that fabric? That comforter weighed a million pounds and it would have cost way more than I wanted to spend on it. But today I found another blue and white and this is just regular fabric. And this actually looks like it's Christmas um, nativity toile, which I've never seen before. There's literally a nativity on it. Here, let me find it. How neat is that? I don't know where it came from. I'll have to look it up. But that, that is so cool and it is so pretty. You'd never be able to tell from far away that's what it has on there. But it has all the wise men and the star and everything. Look. So neat. For those of you who are not familiar with how the Goodwill outlets or the Goodwill bins works, I got a quick short little clip of how it works. So they have these big bins that they roll out and then every time people get done looking at these bins, they'll roll out new ones just like they're doing right here. So this is exactly what it's like in our stores. Okay, I spent an hour and a half in there, which is the longest trip I've ever done here. I made a friend today um, and we kind of helped each other get the things that we were looking for. And I spent about $96, which is the most stuff I've ever gotten here at once. And I'll show you right now. Zoom out a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell because of the shade from this tree, but yeah, I got a boatload of stuff. I even got some clothes today, tons of art and some books under there. All right, so I made it back from the thrift store and I'm gonna show you all the awesome stuff that I got. This is one of the biggest hauls I've ever gotten. A blue and white jar is always in style and it is always something that people are looking for. It really grabs your attention. I love this one, how it's inverted to the normal blue and white. Normally it's white and then it has a blue design, but this one is blue with a white design and then it has gold on either side.
I recently took down all of my Easter decorations out of my hutch, so it's quite empty right now, and I need to start putting some stuff in there that is just plain neutral in between spring and summer. I have been thinking to myself, I really need to find some little clocks. Uh, my husband's aunt had visited us and she was telling me how much she liked clocks and she would always look for them in the stores and so I thought you know I bet there's other people who really like clocks too and I found two awesome clocks today so I got this one it has a little stand on the back it's just missing the battery and then this one is so cute with a little bird on it this one's really heavy too I was pretty disappointed that the other clock did not work when I put a battery in it, but this one was selling for $28 online, which is really good for something as a used price. And when I put the battery in, that thing started ticking right away, and I thought, you know what, that's a keeper. <laughs> so I'm going to keep this one, and I was just mentioning how I needed some timeless decor that can go for all the different seasons right now just be kind of neutral and I think this would be something great that I could put on that big hutch I have in my dining room and I'm using Windex for the most part to clean just about everything that I'm cleaning today. I don't always show the cleaning process but sometimes I do if it is interesting for the story <laughs> but since it's glass obviously I need to clean it with Windex. Here it is all decorated up in my hutch in my dining room and then that little jar there is a jar of some dirt that my mom brought back to the United States for me when she visited Germany once since I have German heritage. This next thing I had to snatch up real quick because I am sure that somebody else was trying to grab it too. This urn I had to get even though it was heavy. It actually has this in here to hold up like a Christmas tree which I think is great but I think it would look really awesome with a topiary ball on it. And I'm working on a backyard, oh, oh my gosh, it's so windy all of a sudden. I'm working on a backyard makeover video and I think this would be perfect for that video. If you've been a follower of my channel for a long time, you know that I adore Ballard Designs. And in fact, I get inspiration from them all the time on the stuff that I flip, but I can't afford stuff like this. Like this urn is similar to the one that I got, except theirs was like $200. I picked up this really awesome metal basket. This looks so high end to me. I could easily see this at Restoration Hardware or Pottery Barn. I'm gonna have to do an image search of it because it's great. It's great quality, the character is awesome. I'm probably gonna keep this one. <laughs> I'm going to use some Dawn Power Wash again on here to clean this with a rag and I just want to say that I'm having so much fun making my house look like I spent a million dollars decorating it but secretly me knowing that I spent barely anything on it. This trip to Goodwill cost me around $90 and if I had bought one thing from Pottery Barn it would have been more than that. And I just find that so exciting and it's like the thrill of the hunt. I'm sure you guys can relate to this, but it makes me love my stuff that I found for cheaper more than I would have loved buying it from somewhere really expensive. Does that make any sense? Can you relate to that? I also got this rug, like an outdoor, in, well it could be indoor too, indoor outdoor plaid rug or gingham or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> but it's a cute color for spring and I think it would look great by my front door underneath our welcome mat. This is like a, an iron butterfly candle stand on a spring. I think this would make for great yard art and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this or sell this in my booth, but it's definitely right up my alley. You can see behind me, <laughs> I love metal yard art, so I might have to keep this one. This metal basket would be great for the yard as well. I think that it is adorable. Look at the little butterflies on either side. You could have some ivy spilling out. You can put um, some silverware in here, napkins for a little picnic on your back porch, or you can put cups, whatever you want to put in here. A plant, two plants, <laughs> anything you could dream up. I actually ran these through my dishwasher to clean them and I definitely recommend you using your dishwasher to clean more than just your dishes because it saved me a lot of time and having to wipe out every single nook and cranny. I'm always looking for frames with character and these two were perfect. This one is adorable. I love that it was a square, so unique. And then I got this one as well. Somebody used a Love's diaper box to recreate the cardboard on the back 
but this would be perfect for prints that I find in my books and cut out and put inside my frames to resell in my booth. There were a lot of really neat paintings to choose from in this book as well as the other art book that I got. And I decided to go with a sort of royalty theme on these. And I picked out the images in there that were of historic royal figures. One of them is from Germany and the other one I believe is from Denmark. And comment below if you know who they are. I'm not going to say who they are, but I want to know how many history buffs we have here watching this video. So let me know. Do you know who these women are that I put inside these frames? Also, let me know what you think of how they look once they're finished. I'm going to be doing a technique on them where I use Mod Podge in a glossy finish to pat over the top of the images and make it look as though they are actually hand painted. You'll see exactly what I mean in just a minute. I hope that song was really relaxing for you and along with watching the DIY process of this, I now have a helper over here. My son was sitting at the table telling me about how when he eats his macaroni and cheese he turns into a ninja turtle and then his macaroni and cheese turns into pizza because ninja turtles like pizza and that his juice turns into soda because ninja turtles drink soda <laughs> so that is what you aren't hearing while i do this voiceover but look at how great these turned out they look so classic and high-end I would imagine finding these in an estate sale for a large amount of money and nobody has to know that you did it out of an Amazon box cardboard and some pages out of a 50 cent book and some dirt cheap frames that maybe cost you $2 total for both of them. Look at how amazing they look. They look collected. They look like somebody actually spent good money on them. This is like a really cute, it says home in the wilderness, looks like a Christmassy print. I thought was adorable and I also had one that is more for fall and these are adorable it says American Homestead Autumn I like this one so much 
but this one's beautiful too. Look at the chickens! The frames that these were in were cheap plastic frames and I couldn't figure out how to get the images out of the frames while we were at the Goodwill bins or else I would have left the frames there and just taken the paper for the cost of the weight of paper. I wish I would have done that actually because it would have saved me some money considering I'm just going to toss these terrible plastic frames that they were in. I'm not going to do anything with them today, but I just want to show you an idea of what I'm going to be doing with them as we get closer to fall and Christmas. I got this vintage cake stand. Look at the pattern in it. I got to keep this one. That is so beautiful. Looks like caning, cane webbing, but it was new in the box from probably the 80s. The box looked like it was from the 80s and it was still in there fully packaged new. How cool is that? Ever since we moved to Houston, Texas, I have been introduced to a world of bugs and it hasn't been pretty. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. We don't have as many bugs in Arizona as they do here in Texas, but I thought that having this little cake stand with the cloche lid on it would be a great place to put my fruit to keep those little fruit gnats out of my kitchen. I don't even want them to have a reason to come here and I hate bugs. Pretty much all bugs in general, I like to just have that blanket statement of I hate bugs. And this is a beautiful way to keep my countertops bug free and my fruits bug free. And I think that it kind of just adds more character to my kitchen and it gives that beautiful shiny look of something expensive. This beautiful canvas I got from the bins today and it has a gorgeous European kind of maybe Italian countryside or French countryside it looks more Italian because these kind of look like Italian villas but this is stunningly beautiful it doesn't have any tags on it but this totally seems like something that you would find at Kirkland's or Home Goods but I think it needs a frame on it although we have already shown you how we make these wooden frames around the canvases um, I just wanted to show you exactly what wood we buy since I've never actually shown you what I pick out. And you have to be really careful with these one by twos because look at what some of the pieces can look like. They're very long so you need to make sure you flip them over and look all the way from top to bottom and make sure none of your wood is warped or bent or twisted because these get real messed up real quick since they're such a small piece of wood. They get real twisted and I, it, <laughs> I don't know where these pieces of wood come from sometimes because they just look really gnarly but you have to make sure you're checking all the way from the top to the bottom of your one by two or else you're wasting your money on a piece of wood that you're going to have to cut off and not be able to use but sometimes if they only have really messed up pieces of wood you can ask for a steep discount on them when you go to check out so there is a bright side to that but my husband is going to do the all of the building and staining of these frames and it's the same as we have done in past videos he just measures them all out, cuts each corner in a 45, and then nails them in with a brad nailer. And one thing that we have found that works best is to stain the wood before you nail it in because then you'll be all done once it's nailed in. You don't have to tape anything off or anything like that. He also does sand all of his pieces of wood before he stains them. And the stain that we have been using lately is Tobacco Roads, which is a water-based gel stain that Dixie Bell makes that doesn't have a terrible smell to it. So it's something we can use without having to wear a respirator, which is really nice, especially considering it's about to start being very hot and humid. So respirators are just a great way to get real sweaty <laughs> when you're working outside in the heat. So it's nice to use things that aren't hurtful for your lungs. <music>
Next, this little frame has a little bit of some scuffs to it, but I think if I scuff it even more, it will look like it's supposed to be that way. It is from, looks like it's from Hobby Lobby. It says the spring shop on it, originally $30. And it says, with God, all things are possible. And it's in really great condition. I think this was a steal. I want to mention that I do not expect anybody to have the same religion as me. And so if you're somebody who does not resonate with the message on this, you can still find inspiration from this DIY because it would be so easy for you to change out the little saying in the middle there to a different image. And this is something that I think is great, but if you don't think it's great, you can make it exactly how you want to make it. And that is what I love about art is that everybody gets to express their own feelings, their own beliefs, their own cultures, everything within their own style. And you can customize whatever you have, whatever you find to suit what you think is beautiful and what makes you happy. This big blue bonnet artwork has a gorgeous frame. It needs nothing other than a good dusting. Isn't that so pretty? Right now is blue bonnet season here in Texas, so I've been seeing them all over the place and I understand now why there are so many paintings of blue bonnets like these. This wine bottle holder I picked up today, I see these all the time at the Goodwill bins, but I never get them. But somebody told me that they use them to hold rolling pins, and I thought that was really cool. And so I think that's what I might set this one up to do in my booth, and um, I think I'm going to leave it in the natural wood color that it is. It just needs to be wiped down. It would also be kind of neat to put like a tabletop on here and make it into like a little table. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> I think the rolling pin idea is really cool. This really huge tobacco basket, or tabasket as we've been saying, um, I feel like this was probably really expensive originally. It's a beautiful whitewash, kind of gray weathered look. And I think I'm probably gonna keep this, at least for now. I just think it's so unique. I love how the edges are like this. It's more traditional and less farmhouse. And it's really unique, I love it. This artwork I thought was classic. It has a bird in a bird cage on it and has beautiful spring colors. 
If you are somebody who loves to switch out their decorations for the different seasons, then a good way to do that is actually with your artwork. This I do think needs a nice wooden frame around it, just like the other one. But I think this is a good example of how you can do big decoration changes that are so much easier than pulling out a box full of decorations. You could just change your artwork to the colors and styles of the season. This large painting has a beautiful frame to it. I'm not going to do anything to this other than wipe it down. And it has a signature, which it looks like it says Mikhail Weiss. Beautiful. There's a dead, <laughs> a dead fly squished on it. That's nice. But it's beautiful. It's a nice autumn scene. And I can either save this Sorry for the dog barking. I can save it for fall and, and put it in my booth then, or I can just put it in there now and see if it sells. It might. Now, I'm going to be cleaning this whole thing with Windex, and I know it's there's a very good chance that Windex and acrylic or oil paints don't mix, but let me just say, it did a really good job of cleaning it and making the painting look new again. Like, it, it really cleaned it better than anything else I've ever cleaned the painting with. So I'm not saying it's what you should use, but I'm also not saying it didn't work. So <laughs> you can take that with a grain of salt and either do what I did and take that chance or do something else that's meant for cleaning paintings, but I'm just saying it worked really well. This huge clock would have probably cost close to $100 new. I'm going to look it up. Shockingly, it actually cost almost double what I thought it would have. I found the exact clock here in the top left. It says it's from Amazon, but it was originally $170. Now, the hands are broken, so it does need to be repaired. But it's real solid wood, but I think that the hands might be broken. So I need to fix those. I found what I think are the identical clock hands on Amazon, and I think they were $15. So either way, this is still a total steal of a deal for something very high-end looking, very fancy, very expensive. And I am putting this above my couch in our formal living room, quote unquote, which is actually our video game room where my husband and I play video games together. And also my kids like to sit in there and do their schoolwork during the day. We do school our kids at home, so um, they do all their work at home and they can pick any room to work in, but they almost always pick this formal living room to do their work in. It's a, it, this room just has great vibes, but now it has this really expensive clock in there and we can replace the hands as 
soon as they arrive from Amazon, which I'm hoping is going to be something really easy to do. And also, these pillows are to die for, and you can get them at like TJ Maxx and Home Goods right now. But let's get that booth tour going. I promised you guys I would take you through to look at my booth at the end of the video, and it is that time now. So I'm going to put on some more relaxing music and take you through to look at my booth as if you were there shopping in person. So many of you are from all over the world, so it may be your only chance to shop in my booth this way. And I appreciate you all being here and supporting me in the ways that you do with it, which is just your your time and having the chat with me during my live chats. That's my favorite part of doing YouTube is having those live chats when my videos premiere. I have made so many amazing friends with you all through those live chats and they mean so much to me. They really are some of the best parts of my week and I'm so thankful for you all. I am sure many of you are seeing pieces that are from my recent videos, but there are some things in here that I did not record because they were just ready to sell right off the bat. And I do need to fill in this empty space right here, but I hope you loved everything you saw. And here's some good laughs with my outtakes. Piper, what you doing? Are you eating the grass, Piper? Are you? Did you eat the grass? Ooh. Did you eat that grass? Did you do that? Don't do that. Piper, don't drink that nasty water. Something just fell out of it. Piper! Quit! St. Jude. Interesting. Ugh. These allergies are no joke. It's so windy now. Okay. Da, 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 da. Interesting stuff, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sorry, my face is so itchy. Man, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Every time I go and talk, I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. My neighbor just started mowing, so I'm going to have to film later. That's what happens when you live in a big city now. I never had this problem before when we lived in the middle of nowhere in Arizona, but it is nice having grocery stores nearby, so I'll take the mowing noise over having to drive a half an hour to an hour to get to anything. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit subscribe down below, and I will see you next time. We post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. See you then. Bye.